Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Last week we took a lengthy detour into the realms of the sky, but this week we're back on track in the Blue Sea as we examine the comic genius that is Long Ring Long Land. Long Ring Long Land is the 14th arc in the series, spanning a total of 19 manga chapters and somehow 15 anime episodes. That is a pretty terrible adaptation rate of pages to screen, and there's an unfortunate reason for why this arc is as long as it is in the anime, but we'll get to that in good time. I love this arc as it appears in the manga. It's the perfect injection of solid comedy that at the very least I needed after going through the Alabasta and Skypea sagas back to back, as well as a nice breather considering what is to come after. The premise of the arc is fairly simple. Whilst on the island of Long Ring Long Land, the Straw Hats are challenged to a pirate contest known as the Davy Back Fight. This event consists of three unique rounds. At the end of each, the winning team is allowed to select a member from the opposing pirate crew to join their own crew. And sadly, that's probably about as far as I can go without mentioning the anime. This is a very unique arc review because Long Ring Long Land is without a doubt the arc in One Piece that was changed most from its manga source material. A lot of One Piece fans absolutely hate this arc as well as its villain Foxy and I put that down entirely to the anime adaptation. As I mentioned before, Long Ring Long Land is adapted at a rate of almost one chapter per episode, which is an absolutely abysmal rate for this point in the series, although these days it's pretty much standard. But Long Ring Long Land wasn't just paced horrendously. The real problem is that Toei filled this arc with, well, filler. To illustrate, in the manga there is a single Davy back fight consisting of three rounds, the donut race, Broggy Ring and Combat. Now in the anime that becomes two Davy back fights with six rounds, including some sort of roller derby game, dodgeball and weird traffic light game. And that is just too much. In the manga this arc is short, concise and an amazing experience, whereas in the anime it feels extraordinarily drawn out and pointless. Especially considering that in the anime we just came from the G8 filler arc and especially, especially because we are about to enter another filler arc, Ocean's Dream, as well as the return of Foxy and just ugh. But speaking of the arc's main villain, I love Foxy and I don't care what anybody else says, he is hilarious, but only in small doses. The manga gave us just about as much as I feel we can handle of him, but we certainly overdosed on Foxy in the anime. But that said, his devil fruit power is really cool and he uses it in some surprisingly creative ways that actually make him somewhat of a legitimate threat to Luffy during the combat round. In fact, the combat portion of the story is hands down the most enjoyable part of the arc for me. Of course, that is also helped by the amazingness that is Afro Luffy, also known as Luffy's most powerful transformation to date. The supporting characters are also quite likeable throughout the arc. Porsche is really fun, a nice female compliment to Foxy, Hamburg is always fascinating to watch, and my personal favourite member of the Foxy Pirates, Itomitsu, is one of the few characters the anime doesn't ruin through overuse. Of course, we also need to mention Tom Jit. The story of Long Ring Long Land actually starts prior to Foxy's arrival, with the sad yet hilarious tale of this man who was stuck on a pair of ever-growing stilts for an entire decade. Tonjit is one of my favourite minor characters in the series because he's just so weird. But he also has a lot of heart, which is a really good classic One Piece mixture. Despite looking quite flat, the island of Long Ring Long Land itself is actually quite fascinating when we get to see the wildlife and vegetation. My particular favourite inhabitant of the island is the Long Dashand, although everything on this island is quirky enough that it makes up for the really boring aesthetic that it originally presents. Of course, the most epic part of the arc, in my opinion, is the very end with the appearance of Marine Admiral Aokiji. At the time, this guy was the definition of hype, as his very presence was a reminder of just how insignificant the Straw Hats were compared to the big players of this world. The last time we'd had this gap spelt out for us was way back when during Baratie with Mihawk vs Zoro. But Aokiji was also here to let us know that things were about to get serious with Robin, something that I really appreciated at the time. Because at this point Robin had been with us for three arcs, and as much as I enjoyed her I was really keen to learn more about her and how she was going to fit into the crew going forward. And Aokiji's foreboding words were the perfect tantalising sign I'd been waiting for. 
Unfortunately, the anime kind of butchers Aokiji's introduction as well, as in the manga, Aokiji appears almost immediately after the Davy Back fight and helps Tonjit cross the seas to catch his tribe members in a very nice yet amazingly awesome feat that really brings Long Ring Longland full circle. In the anime, we go through a whole new set of filler in between the original Davy Back fight and Aokiji appears elsewhere, helping a group of randoms and it's just a bit junk. And that last sentiment really is the theme of Long Ring Longland. I love the manga, but hate the anime adaptation. And if you are one of the Long Ring Longland haters, I strongly encourage you to read it in the manga. It's short, hilarious, and doesn't outstay its welcome by any means. With all of that said, even if we are strictly speaking of the manga arc, Long Ring Longland is not one of the best arcs in the series. Despite absolutely loving it, I ranked it the second worst arc in One Piece in my top five worst arcs video. And it purely comes down to the fact that Long Ring Longland is an arc all about comedy. There's not a whole lot of substance between just having a laugh and a good time, which is fine. It's still incredibly enjoyable, but it just doesn't have the dramatic hook that almost every other arc in the series has, nor does it have the amazing action that we'd come to expect of One Piece. For all intents and purposes, Long Ring Longland is a canon filler arc. Beautifully crafted, wonderfully hilarious, but it just cannot possibly compare to the rest of One Piece. And that about does it for Long Ring Long Land. Next week, One Piece is back in full swing to undertake one of the darkest and most intriguing arcs in the series as we dock on the shipbuilding island of Water 7. If you enjoyed this video, then feel free to like, favorite, or subscribe, and please do comment with your thoughts on Long Ring Long Land. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.